Right, hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, fungicides essentially, because you'll very quickly find that vines develop all sorts of um, bugs and things that you want to get rid of uh, or keep control of. And uh, one of the main things that uh, vines get very quickly in their growing cycle is things like powdery mildew, downy mildew, and other fungal infections like botrytis and all this kind of stuff. And it's important to keep all those things at bay because if left unchecked, um, they can actually reduce the efficiency of the leaves quite drastically and then you don't get all the sugars going into the grapes. And in their worst scenario, um, you can actually do some great damage to the vine and even kill it, I suppose, if it's um, you know, a really serious infection. So um, quite soon after you know, the leaves have started growing in, say, um, end of May, June time, um, we need to have some kind of um, system in place where we're regularly spraying the vines with a fungicide. Now, there's three things that you need uh, in order to have an effective um, program of fungicide spraying, as it were. The first one is that you need a couple of bits of um, legislation behind you, and that's in the form of, in the UK anyway, two licenses or two qualifications um, if you're doing it on a sort of a commercial or semi-commercial basis. And the first one is called a PA1, and the next one is a PA4. Um, and what they refer to, the PA1 is all about the legislation. They're only day courses, by the way, at um, you know your local adult day college or whatever. And the PA4 in this instance is if you're going to be um, using uh, hand sprayers or backpacks or, or things like that. There are lots of other qualifications. For example, I think it's a PA2 if you're using boom sprayers. Um, and if you're spraying near water courses, for example, then that requires another day course. In different parts of the world, it could well be different. So if they are, let me know in the comments section um, below. And I'll just be intrigued as to how other other countries um, handle this side of things. The next thing that you need on the list is some kind of um, protective equipment because fungicides just by their nature aren't brilliantly healthy for human beings to uh, breathe in and you can't exactly go down to your DIY store and get a spare set of lungs if you inhale gob loads of this stuff. So um, whatever you're spraying just make sure you have um, some proper equipment to protect you. Now that will take the form of some protective clothing, just so that it keeps it off, um, off you, some nitrile or rubber gloves, something like that, to keep it off your hands. But most importantly, you need a proper face mask. And this doesn't have to be too onerous. Um, my one, I'll just grab my one. Mine's a, a 3M model. And it looks a little bit like this. It's a full, a full, ma uh, full face mask, as it were, and uh, it's got two little bayonet fittings, uh, one on each side, like that, and um, with a rubber seal all the way around, so that it gives you some really good protection all over the face. And the filters that 3M themselves recommend are um, in a sealed packet like this. And uh, these particular ones are IBEC 1 filters. I don't know if you can see that just, just there. And each letter there refers to what the filter actually takes out of the um, environment. And they say, I can't remember what all the letters stand for, to be honest, but one's like ammonia, other ones um, organic compounds and things like that. Um, but have a look on the 3M site exactly. But these are the filters that they recommend for agricultural spraying. So those, these are the ones I've gone for. They're not expensive. The face mask itself was a little bit pricey. That was about 89 pounds, something like that. And these filters, um, a pack of two, uh, one for each side of the, uh, the mask there, they cost around about sort of 12 pounds um, or thereabouts. And uh, I got these on online, but I'll put where I got them from in the description below. Now, these are just bare net fittings. Um, so they're quite easy to fit, but they do say, it's got an expiry date, but it's about, uh, this one expires May 2025, but they do say once the packet is opened, then really you should discard them after six months, even if you don't use them at all. Um, and if you get any kind of smells coming through the, uh, the filters, then you should discard them straight away and replace them with new ones. So six months maximum life after you've opened the packet. Um, if you don't open the packet, it's about four or five years or thereabouts or so. Um, so I'm gonna fit these onto my face mask. I'm gonna put um, 
you know, all my garb on and everything, so uh, I'm fully protected. And then the next thing you need is some sort of method to actually spray the fungicides or pesticides um, onto the plants. Now, you want to get the whole leaf covered, so it's not just a matter of just spraying the top side, it's also the uh, the bottom side that um, is really affected with powdery mildew especially, that just seems to cover the undersides first and um, so we want to get the spray all over the plant, um, top and bottom. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using my mechanical, or my petrol driven um, sprayer. Uh, this is essentially an air blower but it feeds the fungicide which is in a tank up here down through the tube into the nozzle at the end over there and it gives it a really good high blast. I got my sprayer off eBay. Um, I think it was about £149. I will double check and I will put a link in the description below for uh, you know where exactly I got mine from. But anyway, I've had it, a you know, I've given it a Tesco and it seems to work really well. So we'll just see how it is actually walking up and down the vines with it. So I think that's it. So we've got legislation, we've got equipment, and the third thing is you need the fungicide itself. Now, People who um, do this all the time uh, will I no doubt have their favourite fungicides that they use and if you have then definitely definitely put those in the uh, comments section because I'm really intrigued what other people use. Now I'm not that keen on using chemicals if I can help it but I know that I've got to use something in this situation and so what I'm going to be using is a proven organic um, uh, chemical uh, which in this case is going to be potassium bicarbonate which is decades old to be honest it's used all the time as a broad spectrum fungicide and I'm using it in a ratio of 10 grams of potassium bicarbonate to one liter of water so it's a fairly dilute solution it's a broad spectrum um, fungicide um, proven to work well on powdery mildew, downy mildew, uh, mildew, and also botrytis. There's a whole load of other things it works on as well. And the one thing I have read is that potassium bicarbonate works um, on lots of different aspects of a fungus. So it's very difficult for a fungus to get any kind of resistance to um, potassium bicarbonate. Some people use sodium bicarbonate, but potassium bicarbonate seems to be the better option. Now, um, if you go to a commercial uh, supplier of fungicides, they no doubt will have um, you know, stronger fungicides which are more specific to certain funguses or fungi rather than other ones. Um, but I'm going to try it uh, with potassium bicarbonate on perhaps just one or two rows just to see and monitor how it goes. But once you start spraying, you really need to keep on top of the, um, the fungal infection. So at this time of year, we're in about sort of mid to late June now. And so um, I'm going to have to be spraying about once a week, once every 10 days there or thereabouts, just to keep on top of um, any mildew infections. So that's what I'm going to do now. Sonia's going to um, take the camera from me. I'm going to get this on my back as it were and start it all up and we're just going to give it a go and see how it goes. Now I've sprayed a few rows now and uh, what I've discovered, I've made a few adjustments to be honest. The first thing is I've just angled this uh, so that it points up. Um, I've just twisted it round there on loosening the Jubilee clip. Uh, it means that I can basically spray up rather than sideways and it means that I'm going to get better coverage on the underside of the leaves which I was finding a little bit difficult um, before so I've changed that. Also I was finding that I was probably using far too much um, liquid or fungicide uh, as I was going through so I'm just going to tone the, um, the spray down a little bit um, so I'm not wasting so much essentially and um, we'll give that another go. So here goes. <laughs>
Well, one thing I have noticed in the last uh, week, um, I haven't been here this last week actually, so um, I've been unable to uh, keep on top of the vines and I have noticed that they're growing really, really quickly. Um, so I'm just going to have to uh, go through the vineyard um, in the next couple of evenings and just make sure that they're trained along the trellis line and any sort of uh, shoots at the bottom are cut off and everything is starting to look um, tidy again because it only takes a week and then all of a sudden everything looks a little bit more unkempt than it perhaps should do or perhaps what I'd like it to be. Um, so there we go. Um, anyway, First impressions of this sprayer uh, that I picked up the other day, uh, it's not bad. I've put in about 20 litres, the tank takes 14 litres, so I've done two lots of 10. It's just a bit easier to carry uh, that way. Um, and I think, to be honest, it's going to require about two or three refills, about 30 litres maybe in total, to do the whole vineyard on the sort of settings that I've got. Um, and we shall see, time will tell whether I've actually got the concentrations right um, over the next uh, week or so when I come back and, and check for um, mildew growth on the underside of the leaves but um, yeah it seems to be getting um, good coverage on the leaves as far as I can tell anyway and so um, I'll give you updates um, if I've sort of come to any other conclusion uh, than that but um, anyway if you haven't done so already hit the like button if you've liked the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already I'm putting um, videos about once a week every two weeks thereabouts on everything that we do on our vineyard here but also everything that we do on our small holding which isn't just vines it's uh, all sorts of things so um, hit the subscribe button and you'll get updates on everything else that we do here. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, I'll catch you later. But bye for now.